Today I have my friend Violet with me. Now, during this week we're going to be talking about biodiversity. And biodiversity just basically means the rich diversity of life. All the different kinds of life, from the smallest um, sponge to primates to humans, to from plant, all different kinds of plants and mushrooms. And so I just figured I'd show you my favorite animal today. One of my favorite. I don't really have a favorite. Um, well, I do have a favorite, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> so this is Violet. Violet is an African pygmy hedgehog. They come from the grasslands of Africa, and um, they are nocturnal. So she's, you can see she's kind of having a little hard time seeing right now because normally she'd be sleeping. So what they do is they come out at night, and they are insectivores. So they eat all kinds of insects. They'll eat a few roots and maybe some fruit, but mostly they love insects. And if you can see her, her little nose is going, they have an amazing sense of smell. And it's said that they can smell a worm three inches under the ground. So what they do is when they smell that worm, they're gonna use their nose and they're gonna dig it up. And they actually have very sharp little teeth because they'll eat all kinds of bugs, even ones with really hard shells. Now, one of the cool things about hedgehogs is they have all these spines from the tip of their head to the tip of their tail, and they say they have about 30,000. I don't know who's counted them, but I'm gonna take their word for it. And what these spines do is protect them. Because if you look at little Violet here, she's not super fast. She's not gonna be able to run away from predators. She can't climb a tree. Her really only way of protecting herself is to just be really hard to eat. So what she's going to do is she's going to roll right up into a ball. And they have loose skin on their head that they'll cover their face with. So when she's all rolled up, you can't even tell where her stomach is. She's just a big ball of spines. Now because she's not rolled up right now, her spines are just more um, kind of feel like rice or a toothbrush a little bit. They're just laying down. Now, Hedgehogs are really important for the ecosystem in that they take care of all kinds of pests. You'll find them in Africa quite often around farms, around fields, in towns. <laughs> and what they do is um, they keep down all the pests, the bugs, things like that, that will um, bother the cornfields. So they're really, really important to the ecosystem. Just like all animals are, everything has their spot. The other cool thing about hedgehogs, <laughs> they poop all over the place, as you can see, is that they also um, do this cool thing called anointing, where they, if they see something that smells really good or smells really bad, they will uh, eat a little bit of it and they'll get really foamy and they will throw that foam all over the top of themselves. And they're not really sure, scientists don't really know why they do that. They think it's maybe to make themselves taste really bad or to smell really good for girl hedgehogs, they really don't know. So there's still lots of things out there that we don't know about animals that you guys can grow up to be wildlife biologists and figure out. Um, and one of the, the main things they do in Africa is where they live, there's lots of elephants. And so elephants have lots of poop and poop has lots of bugs. So they like elephant poop because it's a good place for them to find food. And then when they go there, they'll also kind of roll around in it they get it all stuck in their spines. So then, not only are they sharp, but they kind of smell and taste like elephant poop, which probably wouldn't make them very good to eat, <laughs> which is the whole point of it. All right, well, thank you for letting me show you my friend here, um, and uh, we'll be on to the next one. Well, I want to thank Mary and Violet for introducing what biodiversity means and how we can start thinking about it and acting responsibil responsibly with our, within our own environment of where we live, thinking about our habitat, what is habitat, and how we're all connected. You heard Mary say that we're all connected. So my role in Blue Zoo is to bring you art projects that integrate with the science concepts that are paralleling biodiversity. So today's project for materials, you're gonna need a coffee filter, 
wax paper, some paint, armature wire, you can use crayons as well, and every day you'll be making a little journal which we'll turn into a visual journal and I will explain what that is. Okay, first let's start with the coffee filter. This is really fun and all of this, by the way, will be in your kit. You're going to get your kit and you'll find lots of supplies and they're for each project each day. So to begin, you can start with your coffee filter. And I'm putting it on a piece of wax paper. The reason it's on wax paper is because if you have it on regular paper, it soaks through. And that's OK. But what it does is it, it's less colorful. The intensity of the colors is lessened because it's saturating underneath and it's sharing the pigment. So with the wax paper, there's no sharing of the pigment. So I'm just going to quickly show you, and it's very simple. You can choose your palette. Think about where you're living. Think about, so I'm kind of doing earth colors. I have cool colors. I'm beginning with cool colors. And then I'm going to move into warm colors. And you can see I'm going in a spiral, but you can go in any way you want. And I think maybe now I'll drop into some cool color again with this purple. So I've alternated colors, blue, green. And you can see that it's gradating nicely. Now the tissue takes a little bit of time to dry. If you can, you can put it outside and let it um, dry outside. But it might take a bit. So while that's drying, you just pick it up off your wax paper and you let it dry. While that's drying, you'll be getting graph paper in your kit. And it'll be cut and folded. And this is how you make it. You take scissors and you just make a little cut. It's called a bird mouth, a bird's because it kind of looks like a bird feet. And I mean, there's many ways you can find your journal, but this is very simple. Uh, you don't have to worry about thread and needles, which is a traditional way of finding a, a journal. Traditional, I'd say. And then you just take your pipe cleaner and you push it through and you'll have your journal like this. Now, for today's journal, journal one is biodiversity. And I want you to think maybe, what is your favorite animal? Well, my favorite animal is fish. So I very, with a marker, I just began drawing a fish. And I just drew it however I wanted. It didn't have to be super special like a fish. If you want, you could actually find pictures and cut them out and tape them in too. You don't have to draw. And then I just, said, well, what kind of is my favorite fish? And I know that trout, the brook trout, is native to the Adirondacks, and is trout is being uh, highly affected by invasive species in the lakes. And so then I just wrote trout in the middle, and then I put a oh, lake, brown, rainbow, brook, and I'm like thinking, well, what does my fish depend on. And so I just wrote little insects and I did sort of a visual gram. I made a little mountain. Okay, then I would continue like putting like plants or pictures, you can do cutouts. And I'm gonna go back in color. And then I'm gonna think of how can I protect my fish? Or what if invasive um, species invade my lake or pond. Why did that happen? How can I change that? So why, what, and how? 
And then I wrote my dead fish, a little illustration of my dead fish. And then I'll come back in with crayons and color. And you can get as creative as you like. And you, the, the cool thing about a visual journal is that you're connecting pictures and words together. And you're developing and remembering the concept of um, what we're talking about that day, the topic of that day. OK, so now I brought an extra um, coffee filter, and this is what it looks like dry. One of the first things we're going to do is make, you can make little butterflies. And you just do that by taking your coffee filter and just sort of scrunching it. And then simply tying it like this. And you can spiral this down. And you can add antennas, and you can add ribbons, and you can do all sorts of fun, creative things to your butterfly. And you can make a lot of them and hang them from mobiles, which you'll see in another lesson, or a diorama, which we do at the end. So that's our project, part of our project number one. The second one, it takes a bit of time. It took me about 30 minutes just to even make this. And this is a little wire armature. And what took most of the time was the string. So if you don't want to use string, which is a little more difficult, you don't have to. What I like about the string is that it adds some very nice texture and lines to the, the artwork and makes it a bit more interesting. So again, you're going to use some of your colored paper you're going to make the same thing. You'll take your another coffee filter, and all you do is you can begin building up your wire. And all you do is you put some glue around the edges of the colored paper, and then you just simply begin wrapping your armature. Simple, just like that. Take some time. And that's what you do. And when it's all finished, you'll have these wonderful little images that represent your biodiversity.